January. We can't wait. Uh, we appreciate you guys for joining us. So I think let's just start. Like, how are things going kind of in, you know, going into season three with the filming and everything? Obviously, we talked about there's COVID restrictions. So, like, how 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 are you guys dealing with kind of just going into season three? Spence, you're, you're about to you tell me, <laughs> man. I don't I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been a huge adjustment. Um, even for, for myself as well as the entire production. I mean, we got pushed back a, a couple months due to, due to COVID. And luckily we are premiering January 18th, thank goodness. But uh, it's just a new reality. A, a lot of protocols for COVID, a lot of social distancing. Like I said at the top, I haven't seen Michael all season because we're technically <laughs> in like two separate worlds now. So yeah. um, just it's just different. But I think we're adjusting well to it. And you know, I, I literally, before this, I just got done reading 306. So we're, we're, we're chugging along. How is it? I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's juicy. I've, I've only heard good things. I've only heard it good things. It is juicy. Yeah, but, <laughs> oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. No, but yeah, exactly what you said, Spence. It's, it's, it's different now. You know, it, even on set, like we can't, we can't hug each other. We can't, you know, show the love that we did for the first two seasons, which is really unfortunate. You know, everyone's separated by zones and whatnot, wearing face shields and, <laughs> it's different but you know we're getting through it and you know i i think spence can relate we're just fortunate to be to be filming and fortunate to be working you know there's a lot of other productions that are not and so that's what i'm happy about absolutely and even on even on set as your you know uh michael for you um on set how has it been different like since with with COVID now are you guys trying to distance yourself in scenes or what's going on with that um well we we we're fortunate enough to get tested four times a week, um, you know, on, on the lot or on base camp or wherever. We really social distance just everywhere besides when the cameras are rolling. Okay. So, you know, we live in a COVID free world um, in season three, which is, which has been nice. Um, but it's, it's just always kind of whenever the cameras are not rolling, everyone, you know, our chairs are six feet apart. Everybody's mm -hmm. just, you know, air fives and air hugs and stuff <laughs> like that. So it's just, a, it's a different vibe. You know, it's not, a, it's not, we still have all the love that we do, but we just can't really express it to each other, to the crew members, to, to my, you know, my fellow castmates and everyone mm -hmm. behind the scenes. And for, for context too, like normally people are six feet apart when they talk, but these guys like literally climb over each other and <laughs> play football in between scenes and jump around and dance yep. and all this stuff. So just to cut that out is like cutting off a piece of the show. So hopefully we'll get yeah. back to it soon. I, I was very curious about that. What is, let's, let's go back to pre COVID times. What is the vibe of this cast? Because it seems obviously through the show very close and you know, there's a lot of drama and you know, we get into it, but What's the vibe of the cast behind the scenes? Give, give the, the viewers a little bit of that feel of how you guys. It, it, we're, we're a huge family, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we support each other on screen, off screen, you know, whether it was with problems and that's like kind of a deeper answer, but just like the overall vibe of set, man. I mean, like Spence said, we're climbing all over each other just because we're just goofy kids just having a ball, you know, like, you know, in the football scenes, you would think that we'd be too tired to, to, to shoot our scenes and then go play hours of football in between takes. But that's what we do. That's really what we do. We throw, yeah. the, throw the rock around for as, as long as we can. And so like, that's kind of been taken away, like Spencer said, but um, yeah, season one and two, man, it's just happy, joyful, exciting. That's, that, that, that's like the, the vibe in between takes and then maybe setups and stuff like that. So Spencer, since you have the football background, you play in the NFL, whether it's Michael, some other cast member, who has the best football skills on the show. I don't know if you get to actually see that, you know, in the scenes itself where you see when you guys are throwing the pixie on the side, but who actually legit has the football skills, of, you know, excuse me, amongst the cast? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a couple people. I mean, Michael here, we had a, we had a, a, a double for Michael at the, early, at the beginning of season one. And Michael instead was throwing 50 yard bombs. So it was oh, like, really? oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, All right. You yeah, it was like, okay, well, them. we don't need, we don't need the extra anymore. But, yeah. you know, guys like, guys like, um, like Cody, like Cody went into like the lab in the off season, like multiple off seasons. Like he started training with a football coordinator. Like he can catch anything now. He's, he wants to actually go like play football after this. Which is <laughs> and, then and then Daniel's just so dedicated to the craft that you tell him to do something and he's going to like short of killing himself, like figure out a way to do it. So these guys are committed, man. And uh, you mentioned Daniel, obviously Daniel, uh, 
not being from the United States, you know, and uh, having to learn football. Um, how has that been? Because obviously, I think he's definitely he's definitely grown a lot, um, and and he's shown like he's been able to grasp, you know, football. Um, but we've seen sometimes, especially on the internet, where <laughs> I know you've seen the memes with the routes, the routes, the couple routes that he had. But I guess it was because he was technically hurt in that scene um, that you know. It's like, okay, he's still, you know, not completely there football-wise. Well, yeah. seeing, seeing them, I had at least 15 football players that I played with send me those oh, videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, but D, D honestly has taken strides, man. Like yeah. you said, he's from the UK. He never even played football. I remember whenever we first came out and, you know, shot the pilot, he was asking me all these questions about just, just random football, like, <laughs> IQ questions, you know? Like, yeah. And then, you know, like, like, like Spencer was saying, in between season one, season two, and season two to season three, like, I've seen strides in him, like, just with his route running, with his footwork, with his catching, all of it has just kind of been amazing to, to watch him kind of grow into uh, a better looking football player, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys, yeah, like, you guys got him on, too. do you guys got him on the sport? Is he watching, like, NFL games now? Is he, like, into it? I, I've yeah. definitely turned him on to the Steelers. Yeah. I've definitely turned him oh, on. Okay, <laughs> okay. All right. And, and, and my Buckeyes. Team, oh, uh, he's, he's, he's been to a couple uh, USC games as well. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, so he's, he's becoming a fan of the sport. Hey. Wait, Spencer, I want to go back to what you just said a few minutes ago. You have former teammates or ex-NFL players hitting you up about the plays going down the show and offering up X and O's takes. Like, who's hitting you up and texting you saying, this, this is run inappropriately, or who's, like, tweaking <laughs> the play call and, like – Fill us in on that. Oh, man. So some of my Oregon guys that play in the league, TJ Ward. Okay, um, Boss Ward. Charles there we go. James, who's a safety. Michael Thomas, who's with the Texans. Kenny Stills. Uh, Arian Foster. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's, a hand, it's a handful. I'm sure you can, <laughs> if you scroll through my Twitter, you'll find them. Give us the rundown on season three. What are we going to expect in season three? Obviously, we'll put up a spoiler warning if needed. I mean, you guys can't give away too much, but – what as fans, you know, tune because it's highly anticipated. You guys have have had people waiting. Obviously, not your fault because of the COVID delays and everything. But so, what are people, you know, what should they be looking for going into this new season? Uh, it's so so I'm so scared to talk about it, man. I really am because I feel like I'm gonna slip up. Yeah, and forget that you know what we shot and what we haven't and what you know. Obviously, nothing's released. But yeah. basically, you know, uh, they're seniors. They're coming into their their first semester of their senior year. Um, the Beverly Eagles, I know they're dealing with a new coach. And so as for my character and, 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 you know, JJ and Asher, they're kind of handling, uh, this new coach and, uh, just trying to adjust to that. Um, I know Spencer's dealing with, uh, I don't even know. Spencer, you tell me, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Spencer, obviously, you know, with him proclaiming that he's coming back to South Crenshaw to win a title and to pretty much save the school with, with Billy Baker he's now coming back home to, to sort of a new environment. He mm -hmm. sort of has to relearn this area of his. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of baggage that's coming from, you know, the summer that they just encountered that, that we'll dive into um, sporadically throughout the season uh, and still dealing with a lot of, a lot of the pain and, and trauma from his father not being there anymore. So you're, you're still going to see him in both of these worlds, um, but obviously he will be at, he will be at South Crenshaw. Um, but yeah, man, just a lot of growth. Um, we're, we're pinging a lot of like mental health things this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, just understanding that this, that Spencer is still, you know, a, a 17, 18 year old kid at the end of the day. Yeah. And he's still just trying to figure out who he is as a person and as an athlete. And uh, does his in injury have it? I mean, you don't want to spoil it, but does his injury, because we kind of got a glimpse of it at the end of the season that the injury might come oh. back. <laughs> is that going to have a play in this season? I mean, te technically, it's back, correct? Like we 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 saw it in the we saw it in the season finale of season two, and, and we're definitely going to hit on that. And um, it's it's there, it's there, and he's yeah. going to have to you know deal with what comes with that. Spencer, you you touched on um, including mental health in the season three. I've I've liked how you guys kind of incorporated kind of current events um, in the story, whether it's like Nip Nipsey's passing, obviously that has a lot to do with Crenshaw. Um, is that is that like important to you guys to incorporate what's going on currently in the world, um, even with like possibly like the Black Lives Matter movement and stuff like that for season three? I tremendously uh, for me and and even for our showrunner NK. I remember at the end of season one, 
um, specifically when it went onto Netflix, we had a lot of prominent figures and, and actors and celebrities wanting to be a part of the show. But NK did such a great job of keeping it a neighborhood story, keeping mm. it, you know, a story about these two neighborhoods in Los Angeles. And it would just sort of be weird if like these big, gigantic celebrities were to come into this world. So I think along with that and just paying homage to some of the social issues that are, that are happening in our world today, we feel like we can take a lot of those headlines and weave them through the story um, in our all-American way. Mm, definitely. I mean, even uh, we've seen being Black, like even scenes like uh, Spencer and um, Jordan being pulled over uh, by the cops, you know, being Black in America and seeing, you know, those type of things um, being incorporated to the show, I think is good. So uh, Tay is the resident, Tay's the resident prankster on set. I'd say so. Oh, absolutely. Do you, guys, do you guys get him back? Like, do you guys, cause I asked that Spencer because like Eli Manning, who obviously you play with in New York had this reputation of being this incredible prankster. Mm -hmm. And you could talk to like, you would ask former giants about it. And Eli would never say anything when he was playing, but now that he's retired, he's kind of like a little bit more slipped out. So I asked about Tay and also curious if Eli ever pranked you. Cause like, you know, we've had Victor Cruz in the podcast previously. He has stories about Eli pranking him. Other giants have talked about Eli doing these incredible elaborate pranks. So I guess first and foremost, you ever get pranked by Eli number one and number two are you guys getting tay diggs back if he's pranking you so to for tay diggs i would say it's very hard to prank him because he's a king yeah. of improv so okay. if he you can attempt, just flip it he can just flip yeah, it on you. he yeah. will flip it he will flip a joke on you in a moment those are the worst you can never get even with those guys they always have one up on you that's the worst he's always ahead and and for eli so eli was a part so my my last day of training camp for the giants back in 2011 um you know we had the hotel restrictions were off. We can kind of come and go as we please. So the rookies, we still had to live in the hotel for another like couple of days. So, you know, we're sleeping. I'm in there with my, with my roommate, um, you know, cut days coming in like two or three days from now. So it's, it's maybe one or two o'clock in the morning and I hear a toggling at the door and I'm awake. I'm, I'm talking to my, talking to my then girlfriend. I'm awake. I'm like, what is happening right now? They, they can't be checking our rooms because like restrictions are over. All of a sudden I see him, uh, JPP, and I forget the other mysterious figure, but I know it was Eli and JPP. They run in with a trash can full of water and dump it on both me and my, and my roommate. No way! <laughs> completely destroyed my roommate's phone, and I jumped on my Ooh. phone as if uh. it was a grenade. Like, take me, just not my phone. Um, <laughs> but that was that was sort of the the end of camp rituals. Like they would get the mask. So you had to sleep in like a wet bed that night. No, I slept on the floor that night. Oh. <laughs> no, I was completely drenched. I, mean, I love that all these Eli stories are coming out. He, 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 everybody said he was the most serious guy when he was with, and then all these stories are coming out once he retires. No, Eli, Eli's the best. And, and one thing I hope that he does is shows the, shows the world, shows the media and whatnot, his personality, because he's one of the funniest people I've ever seen, I've ever played with, <laughs> I've ever been with. Like, I've had drinking games with him where he's like a killer at charades. And if, and if you're not good at charades, he will just like, snipe you down like he's, wow. he's the best <laughs> so spencer i i'm curious because obviously this is you know based on you know your experiences so when you watch the show do you what are your emotions like you know especially when you maybe have to see some of the you know tougher stuff that the, 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 yeah. the trend that goes down yeah you know early on and, and luckily for me before the show even started i was able to sort of distance myself from who spencer james was versus who spencer pacinger is okay um when the first script came out i was not as distanced from it so i was like what the hell is this <laughs> um but no it's 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 been such a pleasure to to watch the show and to understand that a lot of my stories are in it but obviously we do take creative freedom like uh i remember when we were talking earlier zion about uh, the moment where Spencer and, and Jordan get pulled over. Like that was a real experience that me and my still good friend to this day actually went through. Um, and, you know, season one, being able to tell that story and them taking and crafting it in such a way that that could, you know, resonate across the country, across the world is just great. But then there's, there's other things that I'm like, okay, I know this is happening on TV. I know everybody's going to believe it, but like, let me run and tell my family that this is coming so they don't like <laughs> knock me over the head. So I've, I've definitely had to protect my family, um, maybe one or two episodes ahead just to say, hey, something's about to happen. Don't hate me. The writers took this around with it. Bye. Love you. Uh, <laughs> but that, but they, that, scene, that scene where you get pulled over, is that the one that's kind of, the, again, that real life scene, is that the one that hits the hardest for you? Or there have been some other scenes that have really been, I guess, emotionally I don't know, taxing? 
that also really haven't been worked into the show at all. Yeah, I mean, I would say that one was at the top of the list because that was something where, you know, me and my friend are coming home from track practice at, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon in Beverly and police officers, you know, follow us for a few miles and end up stopping us and without saying anything, take us out the car, handcuff us on Beverly Drive and search our car illegally um, and started, you know, started throwing like random threats at us. They found a box cutter from an from a old job that I had and said they can take me in as because this is a weapon. Um, but just little things like that. And, and I, my only saving grace was they actually found my tracking uniform in my trunk. And I remember like yesterday, he, you know, raised it up, looked at his officer and says, hey, they weren't lying. So they didn't believe that we went to Beverly. It was me and another friend that was black. So mm. at the top of the list, that was something that I was like, I was so excited that that was put into the show because it definitely paints a picture of how, um, you know, these interactions do happen across the country. And then Michael, I'm curious with everything going on in the country, like, being an actor and trying to, you know, be in a character in those kinds of situations. So how do you kind of bring out that, you know, this is such an important thing happening in real life, but you're an actor and kind of also being in that situation in a show, you know? Um, I, I remember asking Spencer about that scene and, you know, he explained it to me the same way he explained it to you guys. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to be able to, to really give the scene and give the moment it's the true justice, you know, um, because there's a lot of situations like that that occur in America too many times. Yeah. And um, so going into that specific scene, I just, uh, I, I wanted to just make it as real as possible and make it just as realistic. You know, Jordan is what is a kid who was in a bubble, you know, and, and he wasn't exposed. His dad never exposed them to, to the, you know, the, the dark side of, of being a black man in America. And, and it shows, you know, because he talked back to a police officer, which you should never do any color, right? But um, just going into that specific scene, I wanted to just make it as authentic as possible. And um, I hope that that was portrayed. No, it, it absolutely did. I mean, we, we shot that scene at, I think it was like 4 a.m. in the morning in, in yeah. Glendale. And, you know, talking, talking to Mike, talking to Daniel about this scene, you know, I, I've never wanted anybody on set to feel like they have to follow me to understand like who I am as a person, even with Daniel, it was like, Spencer James is different from Spencer Payson, like go and create like the best version that you think people would like. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to those scenes that sort of hit a little closer to home to me than, than other stories, I try to wash my hands over like, hey, you guys, you guys do what you guys want for this scene. Don't feel like you guys have to pay homage to my past. Mm -hmm.